So at the beginning of 2020, I started preaching, okay? How many, was that amazing? All those people getting filled with the Holy Ghost? Give the Lord one more hand. I started studying in the scripture the significance of the word, of the, uh, of the number 20. 20, anytime you find it in scripture, actually speaks of the end of one era, the end of one cycle, and the beginning of something new. How many know that's exactly what happened in 2020? 2020 was a reset year. I looked at it in the scripture and I found that in, in Judges chapter 4 verse 5 is the sto- uh, 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 chapters 4 and 5, excuse me, is the story of Deborah. And it says that the children of Israel were under harsh oppression of the enemy for 20 years. But at the end of that 20 year period, God raised up a woman named Deborah and she released a prophetic word over the land. Now listen to this prophetic word. It actually said, she said, I want you to go gather warriors, go gather men, go gather soldiers, and I want you to take them down to the place called Kadesh. Kadesh in Hebrew actually means the place of consecration and the place of separation. How many feel like God's been taking you through this process of consecration? of separation, of being set apart for his purposes. He's been dealing with our hearts in this last season of time. And the reason is because he's going to break us into something that's brand new. It says that you're going to gather those soldiers and then take them to a place called Kadesh. And from there, I'll send you to the river Kishon. And when you get to the river Kishon, listen to this great prophetic word. When you get there, I'm going to send all the armies of the enemy against you. How many are signed up? Okay. I'm going to send all the armies of the enemy against you and you will prevail over them. Well, here's the thing. They didn't have a sword. They didn't have a shield and they didn't have a spear. They didn't have a single weapon except the word of the Lord. And what we have to understand is in the season that we're in right now, The government's not going to save you. The scientists are not going to save you. Your money's not going to save you. What we've got to understand is the only weapon we have today is the word of the Lord. We've got to fight with the word of the Lord. Psalms 29 verse 4 says the voice of the Lord is powerful. That word powerful in Hebrew is the word koach, which literally means the voice of the Lord is a force. So in other words, when a prophetic word comes forth, that prophetic word has the power to begin to implement what God is speaking. We've got to understand that we're living in a day that God's not just looking for a prophet here and a prophet there. But it says in Acts chapter 2, it says in the last days, I'm going to pour my spirit out on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters are going to prophesy. Young men are going to see visions. Old men are going to dream dreams. And upon your servants and my handmaidens, I'll pour out my spirit and they'll prophesy. I want you to understand that God is saying every single one of us have the responsibility to to hear the voice of God and to begin to prophesy. I want you to lift your hand and say, I will prophesy. We've got to understand that it's, it's a time and a season where we're not just prophesying just to, just to speak a blessing. We're prophesying to break the way open for the greatest revival, the greatest awakening, the greatest transformation in nations that this earth has ever seen. I believe that we're standing on the pinnacle of one of the, the times in history that all of history will remember what happened in this era, in this decade. God is saying, if my people will get in alignment with me, you're going to see things you've never seen before. You're going to experience breakthroughs that you've never dreamed possible. And the Lord is saying, I'm going to actually use you to do it. It's not just going to come from pulpits and platforms. It's going to come from people who are tuned in to the Holy Spirit. You're going to prophesy. You're going to release the word of the Lord. You're going to release the anointing. You're going to release signs and wonders. You're going to do miracles. Listen, statistically, only 2% of the church population, 2% is comprised of the pastors, the preachers, the people that 
earn their living on a platform. How in the world do we expect to turn the world upside down with 2%? But when the 2% understand that our job is to equip the 98% to do everything that we do, Come on, to, to, to prophesy, to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to cast out devils. You realize that that's what it says in Mark chapter 16. It says, these signs will follow them that believe. Not believers will follow these signs. Come on, we've been a sign-chasing generation. And God is saying, I want you to be a sign-making generation. I want you to be a generation that's hungry to see the presence and power of God and do signs and wonders in your workplace, in your neighborhood, in your schools. Come on, let's bring it right down to where we live, everywhere you live, doing signs and wonders in Walmart. Come on. We have a lady in our church, every time she goes to Walmart, she makes a mess. Clean up on aisle four. Why? Because she's got people passed out in the aisle. She's laying hands on them, casting demons out of them in Walmart. How many, I, I know that you are here because you're tired of just being spectators. I know that you're here because you say, God, I want everything that you want for your kingdom to come down and to change me so that it can flow out of me. Come on, if that's you, wave your hand at me. I know that there's a bold generation that God is raising up that's sick and tired of just religion as it is. Come on. We don't want stinking religion. Come on. We want powerful relationship and demonstration of the kingdom of God in the midst of the earth. And I'm telling you, you are born for this hour. You are made for this hour.